Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another show about Tyranids. Not quite bug watch, but we are looking at different, uh, we're looking at different indexes, and my job is to tell you a little bit about Tyranids, a small, short introduction into some of our units. Last time I spoke about what our arm is probably going to be trying to do, some of the stratagems, etc. This time, don't worry, we're going to go through units, but don't worry, we have a curated view of all 40 plus date sheets. So some of my, I'm going to be picking out some of my favorites, telling you how I would use them, and we'll go on like that. All right, let's do it. So first of all, we're talking about characters. So Tyranids don't really have leaders as such. Uh, like the other factions, we have a couple of leaders in the High Tyrant, Swarm Lord, and Neuro Tyrant. However, I don't really think they add much to the unit. You know, you see some of the leaders like literally buff the hell out of their unit. We don't really have that. You know, in fact, uh, our units buff our leaders. So we have um, things like Tyrant Guard that give our Hive Tyrant a five fill up end, but the Hive Tyrant doesn't actually give them anything for, um, for leading them, which is quite interesting. But I think they are, uh, we do have some interesting characters we'll talk about now. So we've got the Hive Tyrant number one. He's there for a reason she's there for a reason and that is because uh, it's it's better than the swarm lord in my humblest opinion so what's amazing about the hive tyrant is it lets you cut it lets you do a stratagem within 12 inches on a unit for zero cp or i think it's been faq'd at minus one for things that are two cp like an interrupt that's really good it's really good uh, because you know that's a set value that doesn't really change you know you can do this because x right because it happens and we'll get on to why that's better than the Swarm Lords one later. Um, we also have another ability, which is every model within six inches, its gun counts as assault. Super good if you are running forward with monsters, things like that, uh, that might not be able to shoot. So if, say, for example, I think, I'm, I'm going to regret saying this, but a Tyrannifex is, rup uh, not Rupture Cannon, the Acid Flamer. If you can put assault on that, perhaps it can shoot after moving, which would be super cool. Uh, especially when you just want to get it into range to overwatch the crap out of your opponent, which would be lovely. Uh, we also have, and, then, and obviously it's a beat stick. It's got six attacks, uh, strength of nine, minus two, three damage, like super strong. Um, I've seen it absolutely butcher other comparable characters. So really, really cool. Ten wounds, so it's a little bit less than uh, ninth edition, but it does kind of stand up given the reduced lethality of the game. What I like to do with this character is give it adaptive biology and throw the Tyrant Guard in the bin. I appreciate that the Tyrant Guard do a job for it. it um, depending on FAQs, it gives it the infantry keyword so it can move through walls. I don't think that's, I wouldn't bank on that uh, being a thing, realistically. I think there's different ways to read that ruling and I'm not in the, uh, I'm not in the world where it's a, it's a good one, where it's going to happen. We also have then the Swarm Lord. So the Swarm Lord's very cool. Uh, it doesn't have a gun, whereas the Hive Tyrant does or can have a gun. Uh, it has a Flamer, which is within 12 inches. So you, you can only affect, I think it's 12 inches. You can only affect things near you, but it's still, still decent. It's a pretty good Flamer. What it does instead of, of what the Hive Tyrant does is it gives you an extra CP in your command phase, which is nice, really cool. It also allows you to Vect your one of your opponent stratagems so your opponent stratagems might be um you know something they're going to use every turn and you can say no i don't think so you're going to do you're going to you're going to pay an extra cp just for that which is really cool really really cool um what i what is what is interesting about that rule versus the hive tyrant you get a free stratagem is that your opponent might not have stratagems that they use they might not be bothered and then you might just be like, oh, well, this, this ability is pretty rubbish now. Uh, the getting the free CP is nice, but realistically, it's just the same as getting uh, a stratagem for free, right? So I, I, I think the Hive Tyrant is slightly better. Um, but yes, I'll let you guys decide on that overall. I think it's super interesting. Uh, you can also give the Hive Tyrant the five field of pain. You can give the Swan Lord it because it is a named character. It's a heroic uh, an epic hero. That's it. An epic hero. All right. Next up, we have a neuro tyrant. So, what's a neuro tyrant? It's essentially the new neurothrope, right? Um, 
throw all your neurothropes in the bin. Well, don't throw them in the bin. Keep them for the zoanthropes, which we'll talk about in a second. But the neurotyrant's very good. It can give uh, your uh, out of synapse creature synapse, which is really nice. When it comes to leading a unit, it's pretty rubbish. So I wouldn't even think about it uh, unless you want it to bodyguard. You can put loads of neurogons near it and then bring the neurogons back to life uh, with the stratagem uh, to, I can't remember what it's called now, rapid regeneration. Um, but uh, do you want to spend a CP on that? I don't. Um, and then finally, we have Death Leaper, who's just a punch bag. Like, he's so good. Like, he just punched the crap out of things. And um, he, he just does some interesting stuff with Battle Shock, which is a bit of a synergy for our army. So these are the four characters I quite like the look of. Uh, you can tell that I've obviously thought about the Hive Tyrant and Swarm Lord the most because I've talked about it the most. But uh, but yes, interesting, some interesting characters in there to to build your army around. All right, let's look at battle line units. We have Hormigans, Termigans, and Gargles. Hormigans, they're super fast. You can advance them and charge them. Very cool. Get them into places your opponent doesn't want them to be. Put them in front of your opponent's stuff so they can't get through you. Brilliant, very nice. Um, die to a stiff breeze. Termigans. Similar, but they shoot. Um, they have the the amazing ability, which to be fair is quite cool, uh, to move whenever a unit comes within six uh, nine inches of it. So they can move six inches after that. That's what's cool about that is you can have them behind a wall or something. If your opponent's trying to charge uh, a better unit that you have in front of you, you can you know reactively move your guys in front of it so that they can only charge determinants. Things like that's very nice. Or you can. You know, put them near an objective so that you're, when your opponent moves towards you, you can jump onto the objective as well. So just giving yourself that flexibility. Again, die to a stiff breeze. Gargoyles, um, another cool unit. So really fast. Uh, they can fire a fade. So they moved like, I think it's 12, then or 10 or 12, one or two. Then they shoot. And then they get to do another move of six inches. So they just fly across the board like crazy. And, uh, you know, they again, Die to a stiff breeze, but that's what these units are for, guys. You are using these to strategically block your opponent, to stand on objectives alongside monsters, to give you that extra OC. They're, they do a bit of work in that sense, in my opinion. Don't take these to kill stuff. Maybe the Hormigans, if you're feeling very lucky on, on rolling your sixes. Other than that, I would, uh, I would keep these in just to strategically annoy your opponent. All right, next one. So these are non-battle line infantry. I think this is the, this is the silver medal for this entire video, right? These are really good units, but they're not the best thing I think in the Tyranny Codex. So what we got? We've got Zoanthropes. Zoanthropes are amazing. Take nine, take eighteen. Figure it out. They're all they're so good. They're one of the few anti-tank we have. They have two profiles shooting for shooting. One very strong shot, and uh, one less stronger shot, but still <laughs> ruins things. Very good. Barb Gaunts are great. What they do is, along with your other Gaunts, um, they control your opponent's movement. So you can minus two to their movement, advance, and charges when you hit them with a Barb Gaunts weapon. So it only has a range of, I think, 24. Uh, but they have a lot of shots. They have like a D6 each, uh, and it's strength five, zero AP, one damage. So like it's not useless. It's a pretty handy weapon. Then we have Pyrovores. Pyrovores have Torrent, so they automatically hit with D6 plus one shots. And they reroll their wounds, which is really, really cool. No AP, though, and one damage. So they aren't quite as good as uh, they were in 9th edition, but there's definitely work. They can definitely do work for you. The other interesting thing about Pyrovores is you can take them in units of one. So, hey, if you've got 30 pesky points burning a hole in your pocket, uh, you're at 1,970 1, points, stick one of these in your army and you've, you've sorted your problem out. Von Ryan's Leapers, very cool models. Very, one of my favorite new models. I've tried to make them work so much. They are pretty good. Um, they have a six up invuln, which is weirdly quite good on a on a unit like that when it's getting shot by last cannons things. So it's, it's not the most durable, but it has a bit of staying power with three wounds as well. What's really good about them is they have fight first. Yeah, so they infiltrate. They have fight first. So your opponent wants to deal with them in combat. If you hide them behind a wall, your opponent will have to charge a unit into them and you get to fight the, the unit you char they charge you with first. So as long as like they're charging you, you know, they're good at skirmishing, they'll trade up um, or your opponent will have to put something good into them 
which isn't going to be what they want to do, right? They're probably not going to want to put a good unit in the middle of the board early game because then you've got all your guns and bigger weapons, etc., to try and deal with it. So it's a good way to kick off the trading war. Lichters are amazing. They're like Von Ryan's Leapers, just better. Uh, they also can rapid ingress for zero CP, which is very nice. Oh, the Von Ryan's Leapers also can heroically intervene as if they were a character for zero CP. Ooh, so if you have sat them in the middle of an objective and your opponent tries to toe onto it, nom, 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 nom. Last but not least, we have Biovores. So Biovores, a uh, bit of a spoiler here, because I think this will get FAQ'd, but Biovores are really strong. They fire spore mines. And what spore mines are, it creates another unit. What can units do? Units can do actions, units get in quarters. So when it comes to scoring secondaries, Biovores are brilliant because they can just spray a spore mine 48 inches away to a corner of the board further away and you just score points 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 so very nice very good unit indeed uh, i think they might get nerfed but we'll see what happens all right moving on to the next one we've got monsters all right so tyranny is unknown for the monsters um i think this is where this is the fun i'm having at the moment with i'm building lists these guys are cool as hell so we've got Tyrannophexes at 200 points. You get 16 wounds, uh, two up armor save, toughness 11, I think, or 12. Uh, movement nine as well. So it's not even that slow for a big old beast. You can give it to, uh, three different guns. I would consider two of them. Uh, the the um, Flamer, the Torrent weapon, Acid Spray. That's what it's called. And that's D6 plus six shots, strength six minus two, two damage. Super good. Uh, against marines things like that which is nice especially when they're going to be so good we also have a rupture cannon which if you can take it for the memes i've got one on my desk right here ready to be painted um just for fun it, look at the size of it. it's huge like this like the size of my ear it's massive um and what that does is blow the crap out of tanks is what that does it is uh i think it's one or two shots i think it might be one but it's a high strength high ap high damage weapon so it's very cool so two different choice uh, use use cases for a terrain effects one is uh d6 plus six shots one is one shot so it depends what you're playing into or what the meta is at the time the other thing that's really cool about them is they have uh, oc5 so they are going to sit an objective and your opponent really has to put stuff on it to take it away from the terrain effects which is cool we have a horror specs, 125 points for uh, 14 wounds, toughness 11, three up armor, 18 attacks, four of which can actually tear through a tank, which is very nice. Horror specs are great, so I very much recommend them, and they, they look amazing, like their heads are so cool. We have an exocrine, which is the same body as the horror specs, except minus one toughness, uh, but it also it is a gun. It's a giant artillery piece, which is very nice. Uh, D6 plus three shots, strength eight minus two, three damage, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and it, it, it's really great killing Marines, Terminators, things like that. Uh, elite infantry. I think in the past we've probably been used to using Exocrine to blow up tanks. That's not the case anymore. The Exocrine is used to blow up elite infantry for sure. Uh, but if it does get a wound through on a tank, the tank won't forget it, three damage. Last but not least, we have a Carnifex. So Carnifexes uh, have a two-up save, uh, reasonably tough as well. And um, yeah, they, they move across the board. They did, they've done them dirty from ninth because now they hit on fours. So you, realistically, there is old One-Eye, which I didn't I didn't put in the characters. I'm not a big fan. Stop telling me but old One-Eye is pretty good if you take Carnifexes. They, you need to take Carnifexes to take old One-Eye. And for me, if you're going to take kind of fixes, you need to hit all one eye. They 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 need each other, um, but it is like a 500 point package that you are committing yourself to. So it's not one for the light-hearted. All right, and that, ladies and gentlemen, oops, ah, oh my god, behind the behind the behind the curtain, no, uh, it's a PowerPoint. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you for listening, guys. This has been my short curation of units within six uh within tyranids in 10th edition if you have any questions any comments any units you want to talk about hit me up in the comments below or in fact join our discord on the six plus plus discord we have a little group for tyranid chat uh we'd love to see you there have a good one guys bye